Thank you, Father, for even as we have asked, you have answered us. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Come on, can you put those hands together for Jesus big, big tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you turn to your neighbor and tell them you look good tonight? I'd like you to turn to another neighbor and ask the neighbor, are you ready to praise God tonight? Hallelujah. All right, let's roll. Come on. Hallelujah. Can I see you clap your hands like this, everybody? Are you excited that you made it to church tonight? All right, let's do it again one more time. Hallelujah.
Come on, beat it down tonight. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, I don't know if you're ready tonight. You're coming up, it's coming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worship the name of the Lord this evening. Lift up your voice and worship the name of the Lord this evening. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be glorified. Do you feel the glory of God in this place this evening? Do you feel the presence of God in this place this evening? Lift up your voice and give a praise. We worship you. Rado
voices unto Jehovah tonight. How soon you run God, you are not quiet people. You can do better unto Jesus. Can you worship your maker tonight? Can we say, Father, we love you? Can you say, Father, we adore you? For indeed you have done us well. Manta kato shata barakata. Church, we are praying and we are worshiping our creator tonight. My hand lift up your voice unto Jehovah. Karaka shante makoto barakata. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Church in Jesus' mighty name we worship. We are still praying tonight over ourselves. And we are doing that from Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12. And here come the reading of the word of God. Then say the Lord unto house on the rock. Thou art in well. For I will hasten my words to perform it. Hallelujah. Please give me that same verse again while we take it together. And that same verse, Jeremiah 1 verse 12. We are saying it over the house. And the house is we in church. And those even outside. After the count of two. One, two. Then say the Lord unto house on the rock. Thou art well seen. For I will hasten my words to perform it. Glory to God. I want you to say this after me. Say, Father. Say, Father. Hasten to perform your word in my life. In Jesus' name. I come against delays. In the name of Jesus. With my eyes. I see the manifestations of my promises. With my hands. I will handle it and with my mouth I will testify in the name of Jesus say father hasten to perform your word in my life in the name of Jesus I come against delays in the name of Jesus with my eyes I will see the manifestation of my promises with my hands I will handle it and with my mouth I will testify in the name of Jesus. Can you turn that to prayer over your life tonight? Uh, say, Father, hasten your word to perform in my life. Uh, I come against delays. Uh, I come against setback. Uh, I come against uh, every delay from the pit of hell. And Father, with my eyes, uh, I will see the manifestation of your promises uh, over my life. Uh, with my eyes, uh, I will see the manifestation of your promises uh, over my family. With my eyes, uh, I will see the manifestation of your promises uh, over my siblings. Uh, and oh God, uh, with my eyes, uh, I will see the manifestation of your promises uh, over my business. Uh, and Father, I will return every day to testify of the goodness of God. You can do better unto Jesus. Don't be quiet. Aratakakata. Shaprontekata. Lord, with my hand, I handle the millions. Lord, with my hand, I handle the testimonies. Lord, with my hand, the miracles begin to come. You can do better. Don't be quiet. Ratatakatakatoko parata. Frenatosatai. In the name of Jesus. Touch in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please hold the hand of your neighbor either to your left or to your right. While we pray for this great house, house on the rock. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, house on the rock, Bauchi, is taking over the city. We declare that you trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Souls in their thousands are coming into this great house. In the name of Jesus, we declare that our gates are open continually and the wealth of the land flows in. Say, Father, we declare that our gates are continually open and the wealth of the land flows into this great house 
in the name of Jesus. Can you turn that to power over how some rock about you? Saying, Father, we decree and we declare that in number we increase in this city. In wealth, oh God, we increase on all sides. That father will trouble upon snakes and scorpions, and nothing shall be any means hurt us. In our going out as a church, we are blessed. In our coming in as a church, we are blessed. That father, the wealth of Bauchi began to flow into this great house. The wealth of Nigeria began to flow into this great house. That father, like never before, souls are coming into this house and to find Jesus. Father, we give you praise. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Get another neighbor while we pray for a set man this evening. Get another neighbor while we pray for a pastor. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare that your man servant, Pastor Michael Akko, is strengthened with might and with great grace. We declare that nothing he has imagined to do will be withheld from him. We ask, O oh Lord, that your angels encamp round about him and his family in the name of Jesus. Can you turn that to power over the life of our pastor? Say, Father, like never before, you will strengthen Pastor Michael Ako. Like never before, Lord, your angels round about him. Nothing, oh Lord, that he has imagined to do will be withheld from him. The heavens begin to respond to his every need. Can you pray for your pastor? Don't be quiet. Aratakata, over my pastor. Lord, strengthen him with might and with great grace like never before. Things begin to align up for his sake. You can pray better. Lord, surrounded with your angels, his family is preserved, his ministry is kept. Father, we give you praise. Can you lift up your hands in front of with a clap of renown to Jesus? With a clap of renown to Jesus, knowing fully well he has answered us. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Church, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're taking our confession after the count of two. One, two. Father, we thank you that you have given a vision for the growth of house on the rock about you to your faithful servant, Pastor Michael Akko. In the name of Jesus, we confess that house on the rock about you is increased in number and anointing this day. We declare a joyful, glorified, increased body of believers at house on the rock about you. We pray for diverse children gifts, income levels, backgrounds, cultures, and races to flog the sanctuary of house on the rock about you for all her meetings and services. Father, we pray that each new member will be firmly rooted and planted in this local ministry as it pleases you. Each believer will develop to maturity in Christ and will serve in the church as you have appointed them. We pray a spirit of evangelism on every congregant that they will tell many other people about Jesus and how some the rock about you for exponential growth of this ministry and the kingdom. Father, we thank you that you are sending people who are anointed well equipped and excited about finding their place to serve and build up the ministry of house on the rock about you. We declare that all members are committed to giving and living a life pleasing to God. We have a revelation of how the word of God can and will positively affect our lives. We are seekers of God's truth and consistently operate in the gift of the Spirit, drawing even more members to the church. We bind every demonic plot and attack to him that is petition for church growth in Jesus' mighty name. We loose the Holy Spirit of God to shield and prepare the heart of those you have preordained to join this ministry now. We thank you that your angels are guarding of those you have called to house on the rock about you. At this very moment, in Jesus' mighty name we proclaim. 
Ready to clap offering on your way to your seat. Help me make welcome the ministry of the 420.
his name in this house this evening you might please have your sitting God's wonderful presence thank you Jesus let me make welcome somebody seated to your left and to your right make them feel warm welcome to church let them know that you are glad sitting next to them this evening
starting a new series. Now take it deeper, maybe close to a month or a month thereabout. And it's a series on depending on Jesus. Depending on, on Jesus. Depending on Jesus. Depending on his finished work. And everything we are going to get beyond where our strength can take us let Jesus make it happen for us I'm just going to throw a little light on that today and on Sunday I'll go deeper John chapter 9 reading verse 1 to 9 but for that please listen Sunday is two services please do not come alone make sure you invite someone bring someone to church talk to them Tell them he promises to be an amazing time. 7.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. Also, all the ladies in this house, remember, girlfriend's talk is on the 30th. It's on the 30th. So please clear your calendars for that event. It's going to be an amazing one. Also, we have the Mind Shift Seminar, which we announced last week. And we got people already registering for it. And we're asking that everyone here, there's provision. Um, for you to register for that. So please, make sure you're part of it. Discover, transform, and succeed. You will be mightily, mightily um, enabled and empowered by the things you will hear as you make yourself available for this registration fee is 10,000 now so please remember um, to register just follow the link just put the link on your phone and um, put up proof of payment if you do not know how to go about that and you don't know what to do call the number and the number will instruct you um, on what to do so please it's not just for House on the Rock members it's not just for House on the Rock members it's for everyone who wants to discover who wants to be transformed and who wants to succeed so please let them know that it's happening on the 20th of May registration closes on the 13th of May now, registration closes on the 13th of May also to all couples here I'm sure that you'll have gotten wind of that but this is an official announcement for the couples event happen, happening on the 1st of May on the 1st of May so um, please gear up for that um, I think the event starts by 3 3 p.m. red carpet starts by 3 p.m. I'm sure that you will get to know the, 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 the venue so if you're not on that page that whatsapp page if you're not on that page please do well uh, before you leave today please talk to minister ishaya shaya please stand talk to minister ishaya if you are not yet on that page as a couple um talk to him and i'm sure that he's going to add you up on that page permit me right so please do not forget let's make that happen thank you John chapter 9 John chapter 9 from us 1 to 9 see how I can be out of your face no hurry so especially for the mind shift seminar how many of you were blessed when we talked about reprogramming the mind how many of you remember that series so very soon um, we'll be doing or conducting one or two interviews with some of you um, we're working on that possibly on Sunday we should make that announcement let's follow it up and let's see today we'll talk to him let's have that meeting uh, we'll get some of you who have benefited from that series you've listened to it there's something you have learned from it and we would like to see how we can make a documentary out of it so that others too can be blessed others can see where you have applied 
what you have learned and they will be able to do the same also. It's not just enough coming to church and you're not transformed or you're not getting results. There must be results to your hearing. There must be results to your hearing. Yeah? Alright, let's read John chapter 9. I'd like us to read together in concert John chapter 9, Proverbs 1 to 9. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither had this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Child of God, whether you believe it or not, depending on Jesus will transform your life forever. Oh Lord, let our eyes be open. Let our eyes be open through this word. Let men come to the place where they can depend on you for their transformation, for their healing, for provision, for blessing. Speak your word. Let it come with power. Let it come with fire. But more so, let it come with understanding and clarity. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Many of us have been in church for a while and some of us have possibly built a walk with God for, for some years, some of us um, for some months, some of us who have been in church all our life. For some of you, maybe five years ago you started coming to church, ten years ago, um, two years ago, one year ago, some months. And coming to church and walking with God, you have heard people sharing their testimony how God had done these or done that for them. We have all read our Bibles and through teachings and reading our Bible, we have seen how God made it happen for people in the Bible. People like Sarah, or people like Hannah. Um, how God did great things, even not just for people, but he did great things with people. Such like Moses, like Elijah. Um, how God did not just do it for people or with people it was God himself working on their behalf and we read it how God did great things and he fought for the children of Israel how God blessed the house of Obedidom when other people were dying from the same thing but he got into Obedidom's house and Obedidom became a blessed man how God took Gideon from nothing and made something out of his life we have heard it over and over and over again how God will pick and nobody and make somebody out of him how God will just step into the earth and look for a young girl named Mary and the first thing he will tell her is that you are blessed and how she found favor in the sight of the Lord and I believe that there is somebody listening to me and you are asking yourself so if God did this and did that if God did this in the Bible and did it even now and today what, what is happening to my life what of my own case how comes my life is going the way it is going Woo. you know daddy we got home on Sunday and um, myself and my wife once again we said giving God praise for your testimony for those of you who were in second service we had a powerful testimony in first service if you followed online that would have been great but in first service um, daddy was sharing a testimony um, how God totally gave him a clean bill of health It's not something you get every time. People get there and that's how they die. 
But this is him standing without a walking stick. This is him being able to walk, being able to talk. And we're thanking God. And in the place where we're thanking God, um, also, we, we just remember the whole prayer we prayed with you when you were leaving, even as pastors, um, how we drew the line and we told God that God, as that is going for this medical checkup, let it be a place of rest. Holiday. And that's what God did. Because when he got there, the doctor looked at him and did not find anything wrong with him. Not just that, we, we, we were thanking God and we remembered also, um, I, I think he, he should be coming sometime in the next month or next two months. How many of you remember Prophet Chima also? I remember that day, he stood and he was praying and he cut off part of his clothes. Remember? You will be in those kind of atmosphere and you're asking yourself, Lord, why are they not calling my name? God, what, what, what is happening to me? God, if you, if you could remember that the Andy, what about my mother? Listen, if in your walk with God, you've never been in a place where you are asking God questions, you've not started working with him. Let me just tell you. Because if, you, if you're not asking questions, you're just being religious. They just be, that's why we, we, cannot, we cannot compare ourselves with Muslims. Yeah, we can't. They, they can't ask Allah anything. They can't, they can't do that. But you are in the place where God is now your father and Jesus is your friend. Where the Holy Ghost lives in you. And at times you can ask the Holy Ghost, I don't understand this. Can you teach me this? Can you show me this? So you might be in that place in life right now where you are asking, why is, why is my own miracle taking so long? Why is my life this way? Why is my home, my family, why is it looking this way? Um, Lord, I thought you gave me a promise. Why is my job going up and on, up and on? I don't understand it. Why is my academics this way? Why is my own child going this way? Why is it that the investment I made is not coming out the way I want it to come out? What is happening to my health? What is happening to my finance? Today I'm better, tomorrow I don't know what is happening. You are in that place with so much question. And I want you to understand. Let me go straight to my text so that I do not take much of your time. This man was not just blind. He was born blind. Can I do an exercise just for 30 seconds with you? If you will permit me. So if you are listening to me, just close your eyes. Just try and close your eyes, please. Close it very well. Make sure you can see the light. You can see the person sitting next to you. Close your eyes very well. And imagine a man born that way. All you can see right now, I'm very sure, is darkness. It's darkness. You can't even see the next thing that's about to happen. You can't appreciate colors. You can't appreciate lights. Open it. Open it. Thank you. I just needed you to see how the world of this man looked like. I needed you to see how this man, what was happening to him. Now, guess what? He wasn't just blind. He was born blind. That means he had never seen anything in his life. Never. Don't worry. Don't worry. Never. He was born blind. Hmm. Everything around him was darkness. And I want to talk about that. Darkness. Everything about his life was affected by the blindness, darkness. Yeah. Oh, let me do. I'm being a hurry and drop this. But guess what? Let me go on with this story. One day, as they were passing with Jesus, the Bible said that they saw this blind man and they turned to Jesus and started asking Jesus questions and said, "Jesus, for this thing to happen, who have sinned? For this man to be blind, who have sinned? For this person to be going through this, which of his lineage?" <laughs> where is he coming from who had seen you see at times when people see things and cannot um, give and exp um, explain it they begin to say all manner of things they begin to look for who to blame have you been there where you are blaming yourself that something happened that something went wrong with your finance people will always find something to say 
you're on your own trying to manage your life trying to put things together trying to grow trying to see how your life can work but there is somebody somewhere who is looking at you and trying to find fault around your life who is trying to say I thought you go to church so what is happening I thought you were a Christian so what is happening and at times, most times as Christians we get to that point and because of what people are saying, we are doubting our relationship with God because of what people are saying hmm. so that what doesn't even consign them, they begin to talk but did you notice that the moment they saw this blind man and began to talk, master who did sin, this man, his parents, that he was born blind and everything, did you notice the man did not say a word the man was not the person who called Jesus. Did you notice that he was not the one who ran to Jesus like blind Bartimaeus did? He wasn't the one. Let me help you. Most times when you hear people talking about you or your enemies talking about you, in case you don't know, they are working on your behalf. It wasn't the man that ran to Jesus. It wasn't Jesus that called the man. It was people talking about it and Jesus found his case. So at times, listen to me, at times, that's what he was trying to tell us. That what Satan meant for evil, God knows how to turn it around for your good. So at times when people are talking about you, it's actually publicity for your own growth. It's actually publicity for God to remember and do great things even in your life. I pray for someone here today that God is going to use what the enemy meant for evil. He will turn it around. He will so work it. He will even use your enemies and everything will work out for your good. Somebody who believes what I'm saying, shout a believing amen. Now, now th th this is the thing that made me take me to verse 3. Jesus said, neither this man or his parents have seen but you see what you're seeing right now is that the work of God should be made manifest in his life child of God let me help you I've lived a little bit on earth and I have seen God the way he works at times I've noticed that there are certain things that look like defect that looks like weakness but God has a plan that they will not kill you yeah yeah that's why you must believe in yourself even in your weakness in your mistake you must believe in yourself that you're going to get better because God believes in you if you if you shoot yourself in the leg if you give up on yourself so early then there is nothing God can do for you but you see with time God already has a plan ahead of life waiting for you he's waiting for where he can help you for his glory to be made manifest in your life for everything you're going through right now God has a plan to get the glory out of it. Trust me. I know you might not be able to see how God is going to work it out. I know it looks like everything is in the dark. God seems to be quiet about your issue, quiet about your life. But I came to announce to you that something good is coming out of that situation. Oh, you didn't hear me. Let me speak to about 10 people. I say something good is coming out of that situation. Your enemy thought that that was the end of you. They thought that you will not go far. They thought that you will not make it. But listen to me, child of God. God is working out something for your good. Verse 4. Sir, they were talking about this man and he says it's for the glory of God to be made manifest. My question is these two verses. What does it consign? The glory of God being made manifest with these two verses. I thought that the moment you said the glory of God will be made manifest through this man's healing, you will go straight to heal the man. But Jesus started talking something that was completely off the story. And this is what he's there saying. And I need to stay in these two parts on the last verse. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night coming when no man can walk. I don't understand. What consigns this with healing a man? I must walk the walk of him that sent me. Listen to me. They say walk. Oh, let me put it this way. 
Yeah, I used I remember the song. I just it just came to my mind. There's a project that God has on earth, and do you know what that project is? It's Project Michael. Oh, you didn't catch me. You didn't catch me. There's a project that God has. There's a work that God has on earth. And it's Project Glory. Oh, oh you, you didn't catch me. You're coming there. You're coming there. See, they, they say, there's a project that God has on earth. It's like you right now, you have a project where maybe you're building or something. Yeah? But there's a project God has on earth. And he's consigned about that project. And guess what the name of that project is? So, he sent his son for that project. So, his son now, for that glory to be made manifest, he now says, I must walk the walk. I must walk the projects that my father has on earth. That means I came to tell you. You see, your miracle is not late. God is working it out. Oh, you didn't catch me. You didn't catch me. Listen to me, in case you don't know. I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know what you are hoping for. I don't know what you believe God for. I don't know how you want to see a dollar on another dollar. I don't know. Listen to me. I've been thinking about a house lately. I don't know where it's coming from. But I've been thinking about a house lately. And, and you know you're going to be part of it. But what I am saying is that what I use, the chairs, the furnitures, the furnitures, the fittings in the house, is more expensive than the house that was built. I don't know how it's going to happen but the owner of the project woo, hey, the owner of the project knows how he's going to do it I don't know how it's going to happen you are under the sound of my voice and you're looking at your life and asking yourself how will this thing be how am I going to get there he says I must walk see he's under obligation to do the work of the master he's under obligation to be committed to the project of the master are you listening to me? But another thing, verse 5, let me move on. It says, as long as I am the light, I am in the world, I am the light of the world. This, see, this is my mainstay. Trusting God, depending on Him. This, this verse is my mainstay. It's not even a miracle. This verse. And I want to show you how it works with the miracle. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So let me put it this way. As long as I am in this room, I am the light of this room. Understand me. This is light. True? This is light. True? This is light. True? This is light. True? But as long as I am in this room, Jesus is saying, I am the light of this room. Let me take it deeper, downwards. As long as I am in Michael Ako, I become his light. Woo. For every step he's going to take, I am the one that is going to bring light, illumination, understanding. I will open it up for him where he doesn't have to stumble. So, as long as I am in the world, I'm the light of the world. As long as I am in this room, I am the light of this room. As long as I am in Michael Ako, I am the light of Michael Ako. That means if you want to quench my light, sir, you can have, you can you can you can attack Napa, you can attack my transformer, but it doesn't stop my movement. Oh, you're not catching it. Verse 5. I will explain it. Verse 5. I will come back to that. Follow this. Verse 5. Alright? Good. So verse 6. Take me to verse 6. <laughs> See, you cannot walk in the night if you do not have light. How many of you know how to drive a car here? You know how to drive? Have you ever, ever driven in the night before with a bad headlamp? Has it happened before? It's terrible. Very terrible. Say what? You have to see. No matter how fast you can drive, no matter how good you can drive, you must slow down. You must slow down. You know, does this day 
I, I was driving from Abuja. I think I left Abuja around 7.38. I got into Baochi around 2.11. Don't ask me how. I put on the whole full light. But I noticed something. That there were some SUVs that were passing me and I felt like I should follow them. It took me a while to learn. That mo- me and you can be going to heaven, but our journey, the way we are going, is not the same. You can't live on my own terms to get to your destination. What works for me might not work for you. You, you see, those SUVs, that, there are some bombs like this. They don't care because their suspension is good. I'm driving a car that is low. They get into suspension and they pass like this. Before I see it, can't step on brake. So I follow the car. I'm sure when I came out, the car was moving like this. move fast times let me say it this way you can't even move where there is no light even in your house when when neighbor you know when there's no light some of you that's when you shout Jesus some of you will even sit until there is where's the phone on the touch or something some of you that have small mind this is how you walk I know say my chair did this side there they say don't like this in your own house how much more you walking in a world full of darkness how much more you doing business break it down guys i'll get there how much more you doing business with people who walk in the dark how much more living a life in this world where i am not talking you see when i told you i was going to come back to i am the light what he was saying is that there is light there is light there's nipper light, there's generator. But there's another kind of light that I'm talking about. There's another kind of light that you must operate with. Because why? The world today is dark. It's full of darkness. What do I mean? A business can be working today, doesn't mean that it will work tomorrow. You need light to see through. You need light before you invest. She can be saying, hey, hi. She doesn't look like she can kill a fly until you marry her. She carry knife. He looks so nice. He talks so well, but you don't know that he is plan. He can hack me. Yeah, you will never know. By the way, can I say a little bit on that? That is not Christian value. That you get married and you carry your asset and you give your mother. Your mother is married to your father. Get angry with me and I'm talking to some men who are looking at me funny. Get angry with me. That is the word of God. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother. Yeah? Tell anybody I said so. That is the word of God carry your asset and give to your mother she will show it to church and me I will collect it carry your asset and give to your mother, break it down your mother and your father will plan their life and go you and your family and your children will suffer I'm not saying that you don't have a place to take care of your parents or the place to take care of your parents but please you've got a family you've got children that you must take care of. So you see that? Sounds nice. It's the standard of the world. It's not what you should believe in. Your eyes were open when you said I do. Oh, should I say that again? Your eyes were open when you said I do. And you took a vow there. See, oh, I don't want to talk about the blessing. I don't want to talk about what, what God and Jesus did and how Abraham came into that covenant and made a covenant. I, I, don't, I don't even want to get there. I'll talk about that later when I talk about the blessing. Right, see, don't miss Sunday service. I'm going to explain something that happened in the garden. You know, last week I was talking about the garden, um, how God 
chase them out from the garden, yeah? And some people will look at it as evil, as bad. I, I think I explained it a little last week on Sunday. But I, I'm going to start that. that. That will be my beginning or the beginning of my thought on Sunday. And to talk about depending on Jesus, yeah? So don't, don't miss out. You can't trust men for where you are going to. Because every man on earth needs help. Oh, you didn't hear me. You don't know everything. I don't know everything. We only know in parts, but there's somebody that knows everything. He knows the beginning from the end. That's why he's called Alpha and Omega. That is the person you must follow. He's the one who got the light. Now, this is my mainstay, yeah? Verse 6. When he had talked about light, I want to tell you why he had to talk about light. Because the Bible says, when he had just spoken about light and everything, oh, I'm, I'm loving this. He spat on the ground. Oh, can you stand to be blessed? At times, for you to even get a blessing, at times you go through several trouble. But the trouble, the trouble that comes to you, God is just watching and saying, I know, I know that you will not cost me. And I got, read it about Job. The Bible says when Job was done, the blessing that came to Job was twice what he had. Sir, he had finished speaking. This man did not ask him for healing. This man did not call Jesus. Let me speak to somebody here because at times when you're in the world and Alaji Hassan can call you and give you 50k just dash your money because you're in the world but the day you give your life to Christ some unnecessary battles just start oh can I speak to some real people the day you now say, all right, I've not been praying. Let me start praying. Now that time nine witches start visit you. If I, you will tell yourself, when I was in the world, I don't get all this problem. And is it is it a crime to be a Christian? How many of you have been there before? Is it a crime to be a Christian? That's what is happening here. This man did not call Jesus. He did not say anything to Jesus. He was on his own and discussion started. Now, discussion has finished. Jesus now faced him and said, Stand. He's now standing. By the way, Jesus did not even take permission from him. Jesus did not take permission from him. All he heard was. I can imagine the man saying, What is happening here the worst thing is that nobody could explain what God what, what Jesus was doing have you been there where you things are happening in your life you can't explain what Jesus is doing you, you are just there he spits to the ground and he makes a mud out of that spittle you see the blind man the next thing he's touching his eyes Be spit this man, they run me for air like this. <laughs> He's putting it on him. Let me take it further. I, I can imagine the man say, Okay, the moment he rubs this thing like this, and they now clean it like this, I will see. True, he does all that. <laughs> I can imagine if it was in our days that you say you want to heal somebody. somebody comes on Instagram live hello people something's about to happen here there's one pastor that says he wants to heal let's all these faith pastors let's see them and to make matter worse you are not using spit ah. then you know there was something that came out on was it on Instagram but it was on social media I think a month or two ago 
um, um, Oyedipo's wife, when we faced Oyedipo, came out and she was talking about one time in their family. How many of you remember? Let me see if I should tell the story. Okay, few of you. So let me tell the story. So guess what happened? She came out and she was saying that there was a time she, she was carrying a baby and she felt like she had a miscarriage. She could see the blood. She had a miscarriage. And Bishop Oedipo came back home. And as he entered, he said, give me food. And she said, um, yeah, I had, I had a miscarriage today. I think I have a miscarriage. And he said, you cannot have a miscarriage. Bring food for me. Bring food. You cannot have a miscarriage. And she gave birth to that child. In case you don't know. She gave birth to that child. But you see, she's saying that to show people the workings of faith. True? It was Chris Denso that went on social media and said, what an insensitive man. It's not sensitive. When you're operating by faith at times, <laughs> sense is not part of it. You cannot carry a 12 by 12 and you are trying to fix it inside 2 by 2. How It says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. The way God operates is not the way you will think. At times, it will take a gate man to open your next 5 million to you. Wow. Now, this is it. When Jesus was done, put in this mud, Jesus now told the guy, go and wash in Siloam. Are you giving me somebody to go with me? No. We did not read anywhere that Jesus assigned one of his disciples to accompany the man. We did not read anywhere that there was anybody that was holding the man's hand to go and wash. So how will Jesus have expected that this man goes to wash. By the way, when you read it, you know that he came back saying, true? Oh, I will read, I'll, I'll do with that, I'll deal with that. Hmm. No disciple, no, not anybody was assigned to help this man to get to the pool. In fact, to make it worse, I could see maybe somehow I knew my way around but now you have added mud you have added to my thinking you have added to my problem how do you want me to get there child of God at times life will throw certain things on you that will make you want to give up by the way if you're here and you've not gotten there praise God for your life you will soon get there <laughs> it's, it's, it's part of life but I love it that he says he will not put anything on you that you are not able to bear but this is it every now and then you must learn don't wait for somebody learn how to encourage yourself learn how to tell yourself I tell myself every day, every morning it's going to happen I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. That announcement is going to happen. That miracle is going to come true. When, when I see some of you, and, 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 I, and I know the things that God is telling me about you, but I'm seeing where your life is right now. I'm seeing the challenges you are going through. This is what I tell myself. It's going to happen. It might look all dark, but it's going to happen. Go wash! I couldn't see and now I got more but I must trust God to take a step to go wash because the miracle is in my washing and I must not give up now I must not give up I must, I must not be tired now even when I get to that place I'm weary I'm tired I don't know what to do next I must find that place to encourage myself the Bible said about David and David encouraged himself because it's not every time that you will find somebody who understands what you are going through every time it's every time you know there, there were times before I lost my dad when, when, when I meet people who possibly lost their loved ones I used to stay there I would tell them you know hey, yeah sorry I, can, I, I know how you feel uh, no 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 you don't know how I feel 
You've never been there. But when I lost my dad, when I see somebody when they lost their dad, I know the shoe. I, I know what they lost. I understand it better now. As I always tell people, when you go to Biri, when you go to where people are, 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 are crying or they lost someone, please don't run your mouth. Just sit where they sit. Just sit with them. This guy had to trust God. He had to trust Jesus to go wash even with mud in his eyes. It's going to happen. Nobody seems to be helping you, but it's going to happen. Nobody seems to believe in you, but it's going to happen. 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 That visa is going to come true. That house is going to come true. That baby is going to come true. Oh, that dollar upon another dollar is coming true. That opportunity is going to come true. Ah, that open door is going to come true. I believe your amen can come like thunder. Amen. So I think I should speak into the atmosphere because words don't die. And Amen simply says it is so. So I, I know, I know it like I know my name. Give us some few time. This building will be complete. No, uh, you, you, you don't hear me. I said give us some few time. I know it's going to happen. The aces are going to be everywhere. The screens are going to be everywhere. The state of art equipment are going to be everywhere. The fountain is going to be situated where it's supposed to be situated. When you come into Bauchi or anybody ever comes into Bauchi, this is one of the very places that they must come to. Ah. You must come here. I know it. I know it like I know my name. You know, somebody came here and was like, my God, I've been to so many places in Bauchi and I've not heard this kind of sound. Instrumentalists are good, singers are good, you preach so well, your sound is good. No, 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 no. I told him, I say, everything you see, speakers, everything, mic, is toy. It's toy for the vision. It's toy. It's toy. It's toy. It's toy. But it's going to happen. And guess what? It's going to happen in our lifetime. Your hands will handle it. Hiya! Can I preach to somebody? I said your hands will handle it. Can I pray over somebody? Your legs will get into it. Oh, you didn't hear me. Your eyes will see it. Your mouth will testify of it. If you believe what I'm saying, shout amen three times. So let me close this. Verse 7. Verse 7. He commands this man, take it down guys. He commands this man to walk blind. To go and wash. I begin to understand now that this is why Jesus had to start talking about light. Because this man is blind and full of darkness. So there must be a kind of light. There must be a kind of light that this man must have to get to the place where he's going to wash. You see, when the people were talking to Jesus about this man, all they could see was physical blindness. And if you did not get anything, I, I said today, this is the part you must get. Closing. They were only seeing physical blindness. There's this boy I used to see somewhere in the GRA. I've seen him countless of times. I don't know how many of you have seen him. He's tall. He has a walking stick. Nobody walks with him. How many of you have seen him? Seen him? Yeah, that's around your house. Around your house. See him there. If you see him, you, you will not know that he's blind. There's a singer in Nigeria, one of the best songwriters in Nigeria. I, I wish I could mention his name. He's totally blind. But sir, you will never know. You will never know. He has a phone. <laughs> he plays the guitar. You know him? You know him? What's his name? Oh, 
Oh, you're talking about kebabs. Oh, kebabs, yeah. But E. Daniels is blind, in case you don't know. Yeah, you see? That's I say you don't know. He works no money. You will never know. Never know. Obama is blind, but he employs a driver that can see and pays the driver. How does he know where the key is? See, some of us go through school, but school never goes through us. Some of us hear things, but it has, it has not moved from the place of information to the place of revelation. And as long as it has not made that move, you are going to be on the level where you are. It's not because you did not hear, but it has not made sense to you. You have not seen how to apply it in your life. You have not taken it and seen how to work with it. So there are a lot of us who... <laughs> Hi. One asked medicals, yeah? I was talking to someone here, and she was telling me that in their class... Let me ask her, sorry. Help me. In your class. You see, how many of you started? Sorry? 64 of you. How many of you graduated? 20 of them. You might not you know paracetamol. Yeah? 64 of you, only 20 graduated. You need to know how medical doctors have to write. I, I know some who have written four years and counted. They are still like, trying to pass that exam. It's the same thing that still comes out. You see? There's a part of hearing that brings information. But there's a part of hearing that brings light. If it is information that you are still working with, you see, most of us on earth, we have a lot of information. Just ask us this, we'll tell you, ah, that place now. No, 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 Google on this side. You even know Google. I don't help you. You, you got a lot. I, I was saying that in second service, that you were only in first service on Sunday. I was saying that, he said there's a problem with our generation and Gen Z that is coming. And if you're not careful, we are seeing a level of laziness coming, even though their work should be easy. Why? When you were growing up, you had encyclopedias. Sorry? Thank you. Who is a science student here? Who is a science student? Why they fear? Raise your you don't even know the question I was asked. Who is a science student? Raise it very well. Let everybody see. Ah. What is the bota botanical name of Popo? See, see, see. Because I say Popo, I mean. I, 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 was, I was at home the other day with my dad before he passed on. And my dad just came out from the room and walked into the sitting room where I was. And he started saying certain things. And all I could decode was these are not just normal English. These are Shakespearean English. The way he was speaking it and the things he was saying, I could tell that this is Shakespeare, not just anybody. And, and he was saying it so well. And I said, Daddy, how are you? He said, you will not understand. This is a man who graduated. How? 20. Daddy, when did you... When did you finish university? 1978. <laughs> 1978. I had to ask him because they are almost, yeah? And so let me take them and dad finish around that time. And he was saying certain things. And he said, he said you see what I'm saying now? Go to social and so book page 32. Eh? Some of us no remember our project topic. If not like, talk up. You, 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 you. We no remember our project topic. The worst thing we say in a project where you know even right. Eh? I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. The generation before us will tell you the kind of knowledge they had to build over time. They sat down to read. 
they sat down to invent and some of them it would take them 99 times to invent, um, to invent the light bulb but some of us just two trials oh my god I want to die nobody likes me there are things we are enjoying today is it caterpillar? yeah caterpillar is one of them um, who is this guy who invented the knot? His children are still enjoying dividends till, till today. Adidas. Till today. These are men who did not have Google. These are men that had no AIs. These are men that had no phones. So if you are not careful, a generation going to Gen Z, we have we have everything on your phone, on your twenty five thousand naira phone. You can assess what. <laughs> oh, guys, surprise me! iPhone fifteen don't come out. Did you know? Hey, iPhone fifteen don't come out. Some of us never even get fourteen. Fifteen don't come out. Now, it will shock you. Do you know what I have to say that? It will shock you because a lot of people now, their mind is on iPhone 15. Ask them, what do you want to do with it? They are not looking for light. They are looking for Snapchat. They are looking for for acceptance in a world where they should not be accepted you didn't hear me they are looking for when my phone rings it's going to ring like other iPhones but they say where I'm going to pick it so everybody around knows that this one it a ring like your own but not 15 there is no light we have everything but the information that we have carried does not give birth to revelation. So when Jesus was telling this blind man to go wash, Jesus understood the place of light. What they were seeing was physical blindness that was giving physical, um, his eyes could not see physically. But what they didn't know, that there was another thing called spiritual darkness. When Adam and Eve fell, what happened to them was spiritual darkness showed up. That's why when Jesus came, he says, I am the light of the world. Let me give you another example. The Bible said about Balaam and Balak. Yeah? Balak and Balaam. He came, sent emissaries to Balaam and said, I want you to come curse the children of Israel for me. Now, you need to understand his CV. The Bible said about Balaam, the prophet, is that this one he eyed the open like in a sea vision. He can tell you about your life, your name, everything with his eyes open. He doesn't need to do shit, brother. He tells you like that. And one day, he would step on his donkey. And as he was going, the donkey stopped. And he whipped the donkey to move. The donkey wouldn't move. He whipped the donkey to move, and the donkey wouldn't move. He whipped it again to move, and the donkey said, How about Oga? How many days and how many years you don't get me why I serve you? I've been serving you. By the way, if a donkey that I'm on, the question is, how was he? How was he still comfortable on a donkey that is talking? He sat down there and the donkey was telling him, "Okay, I've been serving you all my life. You know me." Have I ever, ever rejected any day? Have you ever told me, let's go somewhere, and I said no? For me to be saying no, you should ask what is wrong. Ah, may God not bring us to a place where spoon is now correcting us. Oh, you, you didn't catch me. You didn't catch me. May God not bring us to a place where we cannot see any longer. May God not bring us to that place. May God not bring us to that place. He took the donkey to tell him, oh God, can't you see an angel? This is a man that sees visions openly, with his eyes open. But 
he was overwhelmed with darkness. You see, a lot of people come to church. They say amen. They shout praise God. They dance. But guess what? The darkness that surrounds them. Do you know how I know? They don't know what next. When somebody is in the dark, what does the person do? That's what you do when you're in the dark. Most Christians, that's how they are living. What next? I'm going to try this one. Should I try the blood of Jesus or should I try Holy Ghost fire? I speak to you, mountain, move by fire. Move in the name of Jesus. Move by the blood. I apply salt. Move. I bring the covenant of now one thing, one. For every door there is a key. Let me tell you how I get how I get answers to prayer. I don't just start praying. See, most times I don't just get into that place and start praying. At times I ask questions because when you are just praying, you are throwing blanks. You are just shooting. Not that it's not bullet, but you are shooting blanks because what you're supposed to aim, you're not getting it. So before you pray, take your time. What is the problem first? How should we attend to this problem? What scriptures speak about this problem? Do you know all this is I'm doing? Do you know what I'm doing? I'm getting light. Because when it is time to shoot, boy, I'm not going to miss it. That mountain must come down. I, I must know what to use. Whether the blood of Jesus, I must know what to use. I'm not just there. Eh, I stay in that place. And I must know what to use. And the moment I know it, and I apply it, answers come. What Jesus was saying there was that least thing. You are seeing physical and what this man is seeing is just physical darkness. But listen, if I can give him light on the inside, most of you are still living life by physical light. That's why the day they will say this one win election, this one lose election. You don't be like say your lights don't off. You don't be like say they don't slow down your movement. Because there is no light that guides you from inside. Which voice are you hearing? What is telling you to move on? What is telling you to stop? That's where we begin to trust God for our everyday movement. Paul in the book of Acts says, in him we live, in him we move and in him we have our being. There is a light on our inside that guides us, that shows us thy word have I hidden in my heart. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet light and a light onto my path. There is a word on my inside. There is light on my inside. That even if there is nobody that believes in me, I'm not just groping. No, 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 no. no. I can hear his voice. Isaiah will tell us, he will tell you, you will hear a voice saying behind you, turn left. This is the way that you should go. How can you be living life? There is no GPS. Ah, ah. Go to Abuja. I, I think they say there's bolt in Bauchi. But somehow go to Abuja, go to Lagos there are places you've never been to before but you are confident that you are going to get there how? your GPS hmm. so you see that blind man we're walking to pastor well you see that blind man at Winton the boy he's walking with maybe has not even finished primary 6 but he must accept that if I'm not going to stumble, this guy can see light. Can see. Some of us don't know how to walk with God, and God is the one that can see into your future. He knows where you should go to. He knows where you're going. So that's why that blind man, no matter how old he is, he must trust. Depend on the knowledge that this man has acquired. That's their moving. I would say, um, sir, stop. You're about to cross a gutter. You raise your you raise one leg and jump. He must be able to trust to jump. If not, oh God, he's going down. That's the thing. You got so much strength that you are trying to use your own efforts. You're trying to tell yourself that because you went to school. Go and ask the professor. 
They try to tell yourself that because you know it. Oh, go, go to the bank and they will tell you that there are some Igbo boys that cannot speak good English. They wear short nika. When they come, they can't even sign in stone print. But check their account. Banker is laughing. You, your pride is that you went to school. Your pride is that you can speak English. Who told you that your strength is in English? Thank you, sir. Who told you that your strength is in school? Those things are necessary. They are good. I'm not saying you can have them. But there's a light. The Bible says in the book of Luke, is it 21 now? They're about that two people were walking on their way to a miles. And they were speaking about all that had happened in Israel. These people knew the scripture. They knew everything about the scripture. But there was no light. They did not understand the things that have been happening around them. There are a lot of you right now. You cannot tell. You are defining everything to life. Meanwhile, there are certain demons, the Satan that you must address and take them out of the way. It's not life. It's a Satan manipulating something. Ah. It's Satan manipulating something. You must know when to stand your ground. You must know when to say, all right, Lord, I trust you. But you must know also when to say, Satan, you see this one? The Lord rebuke you about this. Nero, there's a lady sitting next to you putting on a white scarf. I don't know how you're going to tell her. I need to pray for her health before she leaves here. Did you see the lady? Nero, can you see the lady? I don't know how you're going to tell her. I need to pray for her before she leaves the service and I need to pray for her health. But can you hear me? Will you mind if I pray for you? There's something moving in your body. How can I be talking and yet I'm hearing what is happening to another person? It takes light. This one, you don't read it in school. Read it in school. How do you start a business that other people are failing, but you know what to do? It's like that guy writing a code. You must be able to start downloading light. The Bible says that Jesus started working with these guys, and he got to a point. And the Bible says he started telling them from the prophet all that has happened, and started expounding the scriptures to them. And bam, their eyes were open. Most of us we can see physically but our eyes are closed. we got ears and everybody can see it. But you can't hear. There's a pastor he's in Sokoto came into church like this. They were having service. Came into church. This were happening and he just stopped. just turn I told everybody to stop and everybody go out now I said everybody run out you know the way now the way I said now everybody run out everybody said running the moment he was the last person the moment he stepped out like the whole church crumbled <laughs> okay if you want to thrive in this life there must be something that you know that others don't know must have access to that. That is the main trust for my message today. When you are depending on God for your work, you know it, but you are trusting God. You have read about the business, but you are asking God. You are talking to God about it. But sometimes it's a trap. God has to show you. God has to tell you. And I'm going to take some time for the next few weeks going to expound the scriptures and show you what it means to depend on God, what it means to trust God daily, whether it's for your health, for your provision, for blessings, for a better life, for a raise um, in your finances. These things are possible. These testimonies are real and we can walk into them if we can trust God. Close your eyes wherever you are. And I want you to acknowledge the place of God in your life. Possibly ask for mercy. Maybe there are steps you've taken, things you've done, and you didn't ask God about them. Ask Him for mercy and tell Him in one minute. Tell Him, Lord, I want you to guide me. I want you to teach me. Today, I want to tell you that I trust in you to help me. To help me. I trust you today. 
I trust you, my Father. 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 I depend on you. I depend on you totally. I depend on you totally. I don't know how the lifting is going to come. I don't know how I'm going to go back to school. I don't know how I'm going to pay for that day. But Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust you. I don't just want to live my life by myself. I don't know how I'm going to step into that house. But Lord, I trust you. Lord, for some time, that car has been on my mind. I don't know how it's going to be. But Lord, I trust you. Lord, you spoke to me about this anointing, about this grace. I don't know what next to do. I don't know how I'm going to go. I don't know what to do with it. But Lord, I trust you. Help me. Help me. Lord, I know I've prayed about this. We're, we're in a battle right now and this keeps happening. But Lord, I know you answer prayer, so I trust you concerning this. That this one, affliction shall not rise a second time again. Is somebody praying? Is somebody praying? Is somebody praying?
Father, we glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. You can say that amen like people that believe that God has heard and answered. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. All right, tonight, put together your offering. Put together your offering tonight. If you don't have an offering envelope, please signify by... Can you bring it down, guys? If you don't have an offering envelope, please signify by raising up your hands. Ushers will attend to you. And if you are making a transfer, the account numbers are on the screen. So please make the transfer to the appropriate accounts. Praise the Lord. All right, if you've done that, please can you stand to your feet even as we take our confession tonight? So this is what we believe. We declare this every day and expect to see the manifestation in your life. Okay, so don't just say it uh, religiously. You're just saying it like that. But say it with faith. Say it with expectation. And that is what you will experience. So at the count of two, one, two, go. Thank you, Lord, because you give seed to the sower and bread for my food. Blessed be the Lord my God, who has brought forth bread for me from the earth and blessed me with the increase of the fields. I gratefully acknowledge you to be my one and only source of total supply. You will multiply my seed sown and you will increase the fruit of my righteousness. Testimonies are produced by your grace as a result of my sowing. I joyfully, delightfully, and excitedly sow my seeds today. And I believe I receive an abundant multiplication of grace and great harvest coming to me in Jesus' name. I boldly declare that the devourer is rebuked on my behalf today over my life, family, endeavors, and the works of my hands, my investment work and enterprise are preserved in Jesus name by my seed I take dominion over every manifestation of lack poverty, want need, not enough just enough, insufficiency deficiency and scarcity in Jesus name I break their power and uproot their manifestations in my life in Jesus name I boldly declare that my money harvest comes to me now in the name of Jesus. I call forth my money harvest now in Jesus' name. Money come to me now in Jesus' name. Money comes to me frequently, easily, and in large quantities and amounts in Jesus' name. The nations of the earth yield their strength to me, and my feet are placed upon the high mountains. Ideas, insights, concepts, Witty inventions are multiplied to me in Jesus' name. Money is never in short supply in my life, home, and family. Money and money-making opportunities come to me continually and in great abundance in Jesus' name. I am plenteous in goods, lands, buildings, properties, and estates. All these come together in great abundance in Jesus' name we proclaim. Say a loud amen if you believe that. All right, kindly pass your offering to the last man standing on the aisle. Praise God. All right, can we take our confession? At the count of two, one to go. The Bible is the word of God.